heavenly beings created by God before he created Adam and Eve. Angels act as God's messengers to men and women. They also worship God. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you're all doing well still. Um, we are getting closer to Christmas. That's pretty exciting. Um, not only for all of the fun of getting to spend time with our family and getting presents, but also because we get to learn again about the miracle of Jesus being born as a baby here on earth and everything that it did for us. Right? That was just the beginning of Jesus' life, and it's pretty amazing. So our verse today is Joshua 24, 15. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So that's saying you guys can choose who you're going to serve. Like people in the Bible, they had different kings that they wanted to serve. But we, our number one should always be God, right? We should choose to serve God. And household means everyone that lives in the same house as you. That's my little bad house. The same house as you. So... That's what Joshua 24, 15 is talking about, is choosing to serve God. So I'm going to think of something that unfortunately we can't be together and you guys can really guess about, but thinking of something that is probably in your house and that would be here at the church too and would also be at my house at home. Mm, anybody guess? Anybody guess? If you guys said a smoke detector, then you are correct. A smoke detector warns us when there's smoke in the house and when we are in danger. So sometimes they can be really sensitive and they go off when you just burn toast and that can be annoying, but they are there for a good reason. Because if your house catches fire while y'all are sleeping, then it starts to beep really loud and it wakes you up so you can get out of the house and go, right? So what are some other things that provide warnings to help keep us safe? Uh, that provide a warning, maybe a stoplight? Stoplight, when it turns yellow, it's saying, hey, this light's about to turn red. You should probably slow down and then you'll stop. So that's another thing that provides you safety. And I can't think of a whole lot, but that's one thing that warns you. So try to think of things that warn you to keep you safe. So our story today is found in Matthew 2. Matthew is the first book in the New Testament part of the Bible, right? So today in our story, we're going to listen to find out about a warning that some people received and what they did as a result. So the wise men had traveled a long way, right? They're following a star that announced the birth of the king of Jews, Jesus, and they wanted to worship him. I got some fun pictures today. So this is a picture of the wise men riding on their camels, and they got those little dudes with them. And you know, every time we watch a play or a movie, I've never seen little dudes, but you know when you think about it, they are kings, so it makes sense that they each have their own little servant, but then they so cute. So they got those guys with them and they're traveling. So the wise men had thought that the king would be in place in Jerusalem, or the palace in Jerusalem, because he's going to be like the savior, right? He's going to be the king. And so that's where they went first. And he didn't want them, but King Herod didn't know about this new king, and he didn't want anyone to take his place. So he lied to these wise men when they showed up, and he had told them that to find the child and then to come back to him and tell him where the child was so that he could also worship this new king, right? But that's not really what he wanted to do, right? King Herod, fun picture number two. That guy looked very nice. No, he looks kind of mean and angry. And then there's our three wise men who are like, hey, do you know where their King Jesus is? And King Herod's like, no, I don't know where that guy is. When you find him, Come and tell me, because I want to worship him too. So, finally the wise men found this new king of the Jews, the young Jesus. And what did they do when they met Jesus? Do you guys remember? Sometimes we told this story before. They gave them gifts, right? Gifts of gold, sweet-smelling incense, and expensive perfume called myrrh. So, they gave him fancy gifts, and then they worshipped him. But before the wise men could go back to tell King Herod about Jesus, they had an important dream from an angel. This dream made it clear to them that they should not go back to Herod in Jerusalem. So the angel comes to them and is like, Hey, you guys, you probably shouldn't actually go back and see Herod because he's not going to do what he said he was going to do. And that's not something we want to happen. So even though the wise men didn't know how mean Herod was, God knew, right? 
and he was going to protect Jesus at all costs. So the wise men went home a different way, and they didn't pass by the palace again. And they took a road that took them far away from Herod, so that they could get back to their country and never have to see Herod again. So back in those days, it was probably a lot easier to not see people that you didn't want to see, because they didn't have social media, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have TV, they didn't have the news, so it was really easy to be like, hey, I'm going to go travel way over here, and you probably will never find me, because you just have to actually physically look for me. And it's kind of nice that it's not that way anymore. But. So this is our third picture of our wise men sneaking away in the night, and they are going around the palace and away, so they don't have to see Herod. See, it's nighttime. That way, he won't see them. So meanwhile, an angel came to Joseph in another dream, and the angel said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you it's safe, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. How do you think Joseph felt when he heard this news? He, like, an angel came to him before and was like, Hey, Mary's going to be pregnant with Jesus, and all this stuff has happened, and now this angel is like, um, You better run, because somebody wants to kill this baby. He was probably like, Well, Time to get going, time to get going. Like he was probably pretty nervous and worried. So Joseph woke Mary and they dressed and they packed what they could easily take with them and they slipped quietly out into the night carrying little Jesus in their arms, just like the wise men did, right? So while Mary and Joseph were taking Jesus safely to Egypt, Herod realized that the wise men weren't coming back to tell him anything. He was like, um, it's been a while. He probably would have come back by now if they were going to. So he didn't know exactly where the king, new king could be found. He was like, ugh. And he became furious. He was so mad. How dare those wise men not report back to me as I told them to do. He's a king. And so he expects everyone to do everything he says. But that doesn't always happen. So King Herod was fuming. He was so angry. And he probably thought to himself, I know this new king was born in Bethlehem. So I know what I'll do. I'll show them all who's the king around here. So this is him being angry. So Herod's shaking his fist at him and saying, hey. You go find him, and I'm going to show them, and everyone will see that I'm the king. I'm the best king, he probably thought. So Herod called his soldiers to the palace, and he said, Prepare for a march. I'm sending you to Bethlehem. So Herod continued his voice, trembling with fury, with anger. Kill every baby boy under two years old. Oh, that's so sad. Why do you think King Herod gave such a terrible order? Because, again, they don't have the internet, so he doesn't know what he looks like. So any baby under two could technically be baby Jesus. A yeah, baby boy, though. Girl couldn't be Jesus, right? That way. And so why do you think the king gave such a terrible order? Because, again, he didn't know which baby was actually Jesus. And he was angry, and he was worried that this new young king was going to take his place as a ruler. So he wanted to kill Jesus before he grew up. But by the time the soldiers arrived in Bethlehem, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus were safely on their way to Egypt, right? They were already gone. Bye. So Jesus lived safely in Egypt for several years. Later, after Herod died, an angel told Joseph to take Mary and Jesus back home. So the little family traveled north again, but I didn't show you my picture five. Picture five. This is that one. So this one is Mary and Joseph taking Jesus out of Egypt safely. So they're riding on their donkey because they didn't have cars. Wouldn't that be a fun way to travel? So Jesus... When they were traveling north again, they got close to Jerusalem. Joseph got another warning from God to stay away from Jerusalem. So Joseph took Mary and Jesus to the little town of Nazareth in Galilee. God had kept Jesus safe so that he could grow up and fulfill God's amazing plan to save the world. So Mary and Joseph had left Nazareth before Jesus was born, and now they were back in their old hometown. So Joseph, the wise men, and the king, Herod, all they had made different choices in our story today. And we all make different choices every day. So people often do things like wear party hats to celebrate New Year maybe, or they sometimes choose to do something different in the New Year. So like I bet you each of you guys have your own tradition. I know growing up, we like to get out all of our pots and pans and we would go out on the porch at midnight and we would bang our pots and pans together and make as much noise as we could. And that was our tradition. So I'm sure each of you have something fun you do. So the start of a new year is also a great time to think about a very important choice. The same choice that the people in our story had to make, whether or not to love God. So when we go into a new year, people like to do what's called a resolution. 